Yes, it's that time again. Totally awesome fishing show time. Now then, we cover a huge, well, massive spectrum of different types of fishing across freshwater and sea, and techniques. And one of the best ones you can do is fly fishing. Now, when I say it's a, one of the best ones, it's just that it gives you a good fight. There are people around, they seem to think that if they're a saltwater fly fisherman, they're sort of cut above everybody else, but they're not. They're not some super cold person. They're just somebody who likes catching fish on a fly rod. Now, you would think you could probably not afford all the expensive 12 and 14 weight, huge fly rods, high hand holds up here, big foregrips, expensive center drag reels, expensive saltwater lines. Right, I'm not paying for them. I'm gonna use my old trout rod here. Probably been, if you've noticed, it's, it's almost asymmetric because it's had six inches snapped off the tip. All it is, is a reservoir rod. It throws about a number eight to nine. It's just fiberglass, it's nothing fancy. And on that, I'm putting a reel, regular, you could call it large trout reel, small salmon reel. Now, for those of you who don't know, a fly line is actually your casting weight. There is weight integrated into that fly line. It allows you to swing it backwards and forwards and cast your fly or your lure out. Now, there's the fly line. This particular one, right, is called a sink tip. I wonder why. The tip of the fly line sinks. Further back you go, it gets fatter and it floats. Now, you'd think if I was going sea fishing, which I'm gonna be doing, it's saltwater fly fishing, that, well, why is he not using a sinking line? The reason being, if I'm shore fishing, and that's a good you know, way to start an initiation into trying saltwater fly fishing, it's really hard trying to strip out and you can't lift off a sunk fly line, okay? It's really, really tricky from the shore. So if you have a fly line like this that's floating with a sinking tip, the bottom end of the fly down there will at least get down a little bit, but you can also, when you get close, you can pick up in the air and start your force casting to get it back out there again. Now, a totally awesome tip people might not know, the rating on fly lines, which can be sinking ratings, it's called a density index over here, it's called a DI, a die, a die rating, it can be five, seven, nine, whatever. A density index means how slow it sinks or how fast it sinks down through the water. Wait for it. Trout fishing, that's fresh water. Do not allow the same sink rate on the sink tip of this, because obviously salt water is more buoyant, therefore your ratings are gonna be a lot less. So just be aware of that if you do start using faster sinking tips. Right, on the end of the fly line, you have a leader. Now, what I do is I tie a little butt section on here using either a needle knot or a nail knot. And to that, I put about, well, I suppose that's about three feet of anything up to 80 pound mono, 80 pound mono. And then what I've done, I take with me, bearing in mind for us in England, this is a foreign trip, there's no uh, tropical or subtropical waters or temperatures around England, is I've got myself some little Ziploc bags, just like food bags, I suppose, you know, but the, the miniature version. I put a bit of sticky tape on there and I've got all the different rates of line to make my leaders with 12, 20, 30, 50. I recommend using a coil of maybe 50 pound mono would be good, a nice stiff one. I happen to use, I don't sell it, Andy Premium. It's a clear one and it's very, very tough, abrasion resistant because you're bound to get rubbed over rock sooner or later. And I use that to make my, well, my leader, which will be about not too long saltwater fishing, about eight feet, something like that. And then I put my fly on the end. Now standard flies can be something like this. These, I'll just lay them out there for you, are different types of saltwater, really small tarpon flies they are. Very pretty, very well made there. All different types. And the ones here with these sort of fuzzy heads would be floaters with the pop eyes. I wouldn't be using those so much because where I'm going, I'm hoping I might get something like a jack, which is a fast moving predator. But anything like streamer flies, these are all, I would call them almost a streamer fly. When they're wet, they go very narrow. And it's quite important, I find, with some of the flies when you're fishing for predators, is you've got the little eye painted on there. A lot of them have that. Uh, it's well worth doing. If you do go in a tackle shop, see if you can buy some of the saltwater versions that do have a little eye painted on there. I think it just gives them a sort of strike zone. You can also make your own totally awesome fly. Guys, in a minute or two, it doesn't take rocket science to tie a fly and in salt water, trust me, they nail it so fast, they haven't really got time to look at it. So what size hook do you need? I'm using 
just a standard six o O'Shaughnessy hook there. You know, things like jacks, they've got a big mouth, they're definitely gonna suck that one back. And there's my feathers, my swan feathers. You can take these with you. Listen, if you're on holiday somewhere, you can actually take a little kit and tie it yourself. So what I wanna do is I wanna put my two feathers that way, opposed. Because when I strip that fly through the water, these pulse together like this. If you put them like this together, when they're wet, they're just straight and flat and nothing happens. So this is my own personal Graham Pullen way of doing it. I put them, and I've done it for years, I've done it with trout doing hackles on flies. I do it opposing outside, so as I strip fast, they do that weeding action. Right, crack on. You're gonna get the first one, you can tie these both together, it's so simple, it's ridiculous. Allow about an inch or so behind the bend of the hook there. You just see the bend of the hook, hopefully. I'm gonna come down to the eye of the hook there, pinching it, still holding it there, and I'm now gonna snip through. The feathers fall on the floor, the wife goes absolutely mental. Don't worry, we will clean it up. I'm gonna match up that other feather, so it's exactly the same. Hold it with your thumb. I mean, you can use any feather, it doesn't have to be swan feathers. I got the swan feathers because I was walking around and they were free. Strip off the fibres here. Now you can see what I'm doing there. Just strip them back to about nice and neat there. It's just standard procedure for fly time. Pull off those fibres like this. They come off nice and neat. And it leaves you the stalk or shaft of the feather itself. Same on the other side. Just get them parallel. That sort of level each side. Just like this. Strip one off. Strip two off. You just want enough to tie on the hook. Now, what are you going to whip that on with? I'm just going to use a piece of about eight pound fishing line. I'm not going to bother with fly tying silk. People have gone, oh my God, he's not using fly tying silk. No, I'm not. I could be on holiday. I just want to go fly fishing. I snip up about six inches. The next thing I do is put the binoculars on because I don't even know which room I'm in at the moment. I tie a simple overhand knot. I then tie an overhand sliding loop, as we call them, over the top of that. I go around just behind the eye of the hook first, put another half, I just roll a half hitch in there, I don't know if you're gonna see this, I do it very slowly, I go a half hitch, let me do it there, you should be able to see it. There's the half hitch, I'm gonna roll another one, you just twist as you as you roll. You don't, look, you can make this up as you go along, I do, and I still catch fish, don't have to do anything like the fly time books say, you do it as you want to do it. If it works, it works. That's what, you know, fishing is all about. Snip off the tag end. That should jam up the hoover when the wife comes to clean the mess up. I'm going to just tie that first feather in there. And I want it to go sideways, so I'm just going to do two or three light turns up and down that shank of feather there. And then twist the feather so it's absolutely rolled, as you can see it like that. Then I pinch it tight, and then I'm binding it on tight to lock it, okay? Same on the other side, but remember to put it opposing. So it's making that shape there. Just do the loose ones around there first, and then the tight ones. Just feed those feathers around those fibres. If any of the fibres don't match up like that, pinch them, nip them off, job done. Then to finish off, just roll a few more. You can double these half inches if you want. You don't need a whip finish tool. As you can see, I'm just doing it with eight pound mono fishing line. Done it loads of times before, sharp flies. You can use wire if you want wire. You can make a wire leader one. There we go, snip that off. Now, you will catch fish in salt water on that fly when it gets wet like that there, just wet the fibres down. You will catch fish like that. But I make an additional thing. I used to use these, these are called, they're called bait update. I'm not selling them, these are years old. I don't even know if they're doing them now. They're called decorator tapes and a bait updating kit, okay, which is eyes. Now, remember I did mention to you about eyes on the flies before. And these are, I think a name we used to use over here was called Flectonite or something years ago. It's a prism, a reflective prism tape. What we can do to make the eye is either cut an eye out of here. This is, is a sticky back. We use them for marlin lures. That's what we use them for, decorated marlin lures, and you peel it apart. You can make an eye out of that, but listen, why not 
just use the eyes that are in there, so easy. And I do like eyes, even on something I put on dead box as well. These ones have been used. Obviously pink's gone already, so we all know Graham's favorite color's pink. I'm gonna go for blue this time. I'm just gonna cut those eyes off. They're paper eyes, kids, they're not real eyes, when I say cut the eyes off. Not one of those programs. Now I'm gonna peel that eye off. Right there, I just hold it on the tip of my finger, peel the other eye off there. Hold it on the tip of my finger. There's the hooks. And just about there, I'm just gonna place it. I'm hoping you can see this. Look, I'm not doing this with the fly vice, I'm just doing it. As I would do it if I was on holiday thinking, do you know what, I just fancy going fly fishing. How can I make something out and work? There we go. Pinch it along the shank there with your nail so it's really, really tight. Now that, bit of spit doesn't hurt anything. There we go. That is my saltwater fly, and that's what we're gonna be using, trying to catch a jack. Now, you could probably catch bass on that, pollock on that, barracuda, if you use barracuda guys, use wire. Do not use cable wire, use uh, about number nine wire, a little short piece about a foot long, then if a barracuda hits it, he doesn't cut you off. Another fisher might cut you off, it's called the needlefish, but I'm gonna put that on 50 pound mono, I'm taking it down the rocks in a subtropical area and see if I can't catch you guys a jack. See what we can do out there. And I'm telling you, there's every chance I could actually get blackjack on a fly and lose it. One of the factors you have to take into consideration when you're doing saltwater fly fishing is the wind on the ocean. There's always some form of ocean breeze. So don't be afraid to do a casting technique known as double hauling. That consists of loading the rod up by pulling with your free hand, getting plenty of power into the rod and accelerating that line to shoot it out into any sea breeze you can. Just give that lure or fly a few seconds to sink down in the water and what you've got to do with predators is they attack at speed just like this wham hook up there you've got to strip it at speed as well on a hollow glass fi fiberglass rod like i've got here it puts a monumental bend in it but the benefit with fiberglass is it's rare for it to break. You can put a lot of pressure in. It might be a bit soft, but you can take out some pretty big fish with it. And in this case, what is it? Is it a jack? No, it's a really nice grouper. As with all grouper, it's gonna try and dig and get me buried in those rocks. And that's the reason I use 80 pound for a butt section on the fly rod and 50 pound uh, mono leader you could also use fluorocarbon, I guess, if you wanted, which is a, it's, it's a bit harder, a bit more abrasion resistant. And then I can haul the fish up the rocks like this, hand over hand, and get it right out. What a success. And there's the fly, and you can see giant size eyes on that sticky tape lure. Great fish, pleased with that one. They're a great eating fish, a grouper. In this case, it's totally awesome fishing. I don't need to kill it it's gonna get put back. You can also catch fish using something called a fly spoon, which is actually a little revolving blade, a lightweight spinner. It doesn't have a treble hook like a spinner has, it has a single hook on the end. You can actually cast it out at sea, it's very light to cast, just let it sink, strip it back in, and of course the blade is, re is revolving all the time, you get fish like this.
even though you're working that as a fly, that little fly spoon, you can actually retrieve at a fairly constant speed with the knowledge that that blade would always be spinning around. So you don't necessarily have to strip it as fast as you would do, let's say a bucktail or a stream of fly. Uh, here comes a fish that's took it and just look, beautiful colors in it. What is it? I have absolutely no idea. It looks like some form of wrasse. Don't neglect trying around the edges of rocks because although this particular area is a nice beach, there are always going to be jacks and other predators around there. And here we go, jack hookup, stripping the reel out, no question what this is, an incredibly powerful dogged fish and he's trying to get me in the left there, round underneath the rock ledge. The water's actually been channeled out by a huge swells that come up into this sort of bay area that I'm fishing and that jack is stripping me out big time trying to get me around outside and possibly in the rocks in the background. You just got to keep the pressure on, uh oh, the hook pulls. Not one to give up and you're going to lose fish, just keep flogging away there, flailing away and best I find with saltwater fly fishing is to do lots of little casts, say 15 or 20 minutes of casting to give yourself a break. Oh, he fell off the hook. Bye. This time, a real good solid hook up, a strip out on the reel. Yes, it's only a trout rod, don't forget. Normally we catch it two or three pound rainbows and they're certainly not gonna pull anything like as hard as a jack can. One of the greatest fighting fish in the ocean. And just look at the ocean, I'm having to contend with huge swells coming in there as well. Will I catch it? I have no idea. I haven't seen the film. Was I there? I can't remember at my age. Well, there we go, I can't do any more than show you that you can use a regular trout rod and catch fabulous game fish, big game sporting fish like these jacks. The blackjack there, fabulous fighting fish, big blunt nose. What a cracker jack, cracker jack, blackjack, I love it, I love it. Where do I get it from? And of course, the options there to put them back. But I've got to tell you guys, it got worse because I found a harbour where there were blackjacks just teeming around this harbour at night. But there was a spotlight on down on this by the edge of the harbour and I tried casting out, trying to get these jacks to take a fly at night. It's something I've never done any night fishing for jacks before, but big time surf coming in two ways, threatening to knock me off my feet. Wow, what a place to fly fish. Right, well, I tried off the beach here, but it's really dangerous, a bit of undercurrent there. And I think possibly it's like low tide. So I'm going to try and hook one up for you over here, because they're right in tight to the rocks. I've used some leftover dinner, a bit of old cooked tuna. That should chum them up, and I could drop the fly to them. We'll see if I at least get to show you a hook up on a jack with a fly rod at night. Maybe.
we go. <laughs> blue and white in colour. Definitely blue and white at night. And ice jack, taken where they dump all the carcasses. There's plenty here, it's a bit of action, a bit of fun. I would have liked to have got it off the beach, but I just couldn't risk getting washed away over there. There's a the jack, nighttime jack fishing on the fly. Totally awesome. So there you go, I hope there's a few tips in there to show you can actually get an initiation into saltwater fly fishing using, yes, regular fly fishing rods for trout. And of course, you can get your own flies and that's got to be good news. Free, cheap and you can experiment and enjoy it.